Is Huberto first-round pick worthy? Tune in to find out as we drop the puck. and welcome back to another Fantasy Hockey Puck podcast. I'm here again with my co-hosts Ben Rutledge and Owen Hamilton. How are you doing, guys? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm doing pretty tough good tough loss last night for the Bruins. Uh, disappointing end of the season, but a uh, good run for them. Getting Hall in the, at the trade deadline put up a terrific end of their season, but uh, felt the same way with the Leafs, we'll say that. Yeah, definitely. I think it was kind of disappointing uh, end to their season. They had a couple injuries re- re- leading to their loss, including Rask wasn't at 100%. And obviously, Grizzlick with a couple cough-ups cost them the game. Jake Gardner 2.0, shall we call him? Uh, you never know. Terrible contract for the Bruins, though, I think. Um, <laughs> well, that, probably should have been it, paid a little way, bit less. It, it's pretty bad for hockey for a team like Montreal and the Islanders to make it. Teams with absolutely no star power who just went off of defensive positioning and goal tending in the case of Montreal. Like, like realistically, the Bruins and the Leafs, two, two are the more popular and more fun to watch teams, really should be the ones going further. Do you not agree? Yeah, I mean, it's like, would you, could you? Um I mean, I feel like it's good for the Habs and Islanders fan bases, especially for hockey because an American team with such a big market like New York is actually giving giving it another deep run. I think it would be beneficial if like some some big market team like the Habs or New York won rather than the Tampa Bay no fans, you know. Tampa um, Bay has fans, it's Florida. <laughs> I mean they still Florida, have it. It's still a. Florida, it's still a somewhat small market team. It's Florida. Market Florida market plays market in market. Sunrise. Do you know where that is? I have no idea where that is. Yeah. True. <laughs> um. But yeah, still like, I, it's a small market team. Come on, Tampa Bay is pretty small market. So is so is like um. Who Vegas is I, big I'm market. Talking about Vegas is big market. Uh, I'm not talking more. about market. I'm not talking about marketing. I'm talking about pure enjoyment factor. The Leafs, the Bruins, the Lightning, the Avalanche. Those are like those are for the more like offensively powered teams, and those are teams you want to be watching. You don't want to be watching two one win for the Montreal Canadiens with the shots being twenty three to twenty. Like no one wants to sit down and watch that. Like it was brutal yeah, to watch like Game it. Seven. There was no energy in Game Seven. Leafs Habs. That's not good for the league. Yeah, and I feel like the Islanders win games off of random bouncing pucks, which is why they're so good in the playoffs, because it's really hard to get in beautiful plays going, like um, skilled teams like Tampa Bay and uh, the Leafs are so good at during the regular season, and it's more so just batting at pucks in the in the blue paint. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I would like to hear, oh, and you start with your final four predictions so obviously we have three of the four teams but i'd like to hear what you think honestly i probably i see uh vegas beating colorado i've watched pretty much every game in that series and i mean colorado just does not have a third period like i just they they can't win it in the third vegas's defense seems to be play really really well in that in those closing minutes and i just don't see colorado winning two straight with the win and what do you think about the, the Tampa Bay Montreal? That's correct, right? No, sorry, the no, New York Tampa New York, York, the New York Tampa Bay series. Oh, really tough. Honestly, I'd probably give that to the Islanders. Just because uh I think they have a really, really good defense, like overall as I mean, Lightning also have a really good defense, but they do rely a lot on a star while the Islanders are just really, really good. 
So I'd give the Islanders that series. Yeah, I think it's interesting to look at how they, these two teams faced off in the same round, round three last year, and Tampa took it in six to, and then proceeded to go and win the cup. Um, it was Dallas. It will be interesting. In Dallas. <laughs> no, they played the Islanders in round three. You know what I'm saying, but in the finals, the they play Dallas. They will not be playing, unless somehow the Habs get there, they won't be playing Dallas. Also a pretty different Lightning team. That's true. <laughs> But still, I think Tampa. I think that Tampa will will take that series again. I don't think, unless there's some sort of parody, which the Islanders have been very good at in recent years. I, they're eighteen. I, I, I don't. Half. I don't see them winning that. If your if your team payrolls ninety nine million dollars and you're going up against a team whose payrolls eighty million dollars, you should be winning. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think for the the and, you know this side. whole big controversy with the Islanders and the refs. The I was just, be, I was the, the, the New York fans. fans. Bruins fans being Bruins fans. Like, let's just relax there. The calls I mean, went against them against Pittsburgh. The calls went against them in Pittsburgh. The calls went for them against Boston. It just, it's how it works. Yeah. So, but I think on paper, the Islanders are going to easily why I love the sports, series. That's so why I love sports. Because there's, there's, there's human error. There's human error. The refs make yeah. errors. That's why yeah, it's better. Definitely. Whereas if it was just a robot making the calls. It's not as, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I still I see the Habs losing to Vegas. I see that likely, as and then and then it's, then it's gonna be a ball. I think it's gonna be a Vegas Tampa final. I think um, I think Vegas will win, but if Colorado wins, Colorado's winning the cup against Tampa Bay. If Vegas wins, Vegas is losing to Montreal, and Tampa's winning the cup. That's my my prediction. Do you think that Vegas would lose to Montreal? Yeah, because because Vegas lacks the offensive firepower. They they play very similar games, and I just think that when it comes down, right, to, I, would I feel like I feel like I Montreal's good offense against the offensive bro. teams. Look, I'll, look, Winnipeg didn't have a defense. Leafs didn't really have a defense. The Leafs look, have a defense. very the Leafs okay. They have a defense. But, defense. The Leafs are seven goals against the Leafs and the Jets. They're known for their offense. Yes, and but the, 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 the Leafs, and the Habs were able to shut that down. I feel like if they play Vegas, Vegas is going to have a good enough defense to stop them from scoring their yeah, – they, they, they scored scoring. five goals a game against the Jets or like five, four, three. Yeah, not, I, I don't think they're going to be scoring like that against Vegas, especially with their nice decor, and I think Vegas is going to take that series pretty easily. Team Canada wins gold in the World Championships. They beat Finland 3-2 to two in overtime. Nick Paul scores from somebody I don't know and somebody I don't know. Yeah. I believe it was uh, actually Manjia Pane and Connor Brown. But anyway, Owen Power, the 18 year old, what did you guys think? Um, I think he put through a, a pretty solid performance together. You know, it was interesting to see Manjia Pane as like a lesser known name getting MVP of the tournament uh, for Team Canada. Um, yeah, he put a really good I think team. that's good. Yeah, he had a really good tournament. I think that's probably going to affect his fantasy value pretty high pretty good sleeper to pick up in a fantasy league because, you know, the Flames haven't figured out how to put together a decent offense over he, the last year. So I think he could be, a, yeah, he's, he's young and he could, he could be a cornerstone of their offense next year. Um, somebody that comes out of nowhere and has a breakout season. And they had him. Yeah, they had Manjo Pane playing with Monaghan and Goudreau last year. And I think that that could really – bring up his value next year is he could be he's playing with decent offensively skilled players and I think that that could really make him a high sleeper target to go after in the late the late rounds late teen rounds yeah definitely especially if Johnny Hockey can put something together like this guy was kind of invisible over the last year not doing much um and we know that he can be a elite hockey player at times, a star to say the least. Um, so we'll, we'll hopefully see um, him showing his true colors again uh, sometime during next season and bring up Manje Pane's value a little bit too as a sleeper pick. Now finally, the most coveted thing in our opening segment, Matthews versus McKinnon. Owen, would you like to start? Um, it's no secret. Uh, I am an Avalanche fan. That's why I, 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 when I did my ozone segment uh, last episode, I, I felt like it was really fun to be able to just honestly say what I've been thinking about my team. 
And obviously, I'm going to pick McKinnon over Matthews. You're definitely picking Matthews. Um, so uh, would you like to say why or who you're picking and why? Well, here's the thing. Obviously, the Leafs fan of me says Matthews is better. Matthews better defensively. He's a better goal scorer, um, but that's about it. McKinnon's faster. Actually, I'd say he probably has better hands. He's. I really think he could go either way. For fantasy, it does not matter who you pick. Either one, slam, dunk, like guarantee top three player, like no no matter what, barring injuries. Right, but who do you think is going to be the number, the true number two pick next year? Like, it's in obviously fantasy, going to be – it's fantasy. no question. Unless he gets injured, McDavid is going to be the, the star number one. But then you you have some some combination of Matthews and McKinnon going two three, but which one's gonna which one's gonna take the cake? For Matt for fantasy, it's gonna be McKinnon. But I think for a true for an a true hockey team, picking one player to be a franchise player, I take Matthews. Elite goal scorer, good defensive center, very physical, and um, still very young like three or four years younger than McKinnon. So that's why for, if you're starting a team, I take Matthews for fantasy. I take McKinnon for dynasty. I take Matthews and really, really, I take McKinnon. I take McKinnon in yearly points leagues. That's the only thing I take him in in yearly bango. Um, I take Matthews because Matthews of like any first round player, unless you're taking a defenseman is going to lead everyone in the first round in shots hits and blocks he's gonna lead all first round forwards he did the last year like I, I would not be surprised to see him do it again yeah right and I, I don't know why you're necessarily saying that McKin- you think McKinnon's gonna have more yearly points or anything because Matthews look, look know, at got the, the ro- he got the the thing is he got the, the rocket this year yeah but McKinnon he kind of disappeared he kind of disappeared in the playoffs but fantasy happens in the regular season and Matthews had a 0.81 uh, goal per game pace. And goals, as you know, in most leagues are worth more than assists. So I think that Matthews could easily have a better um, fantasy value than McKinnon in, in certain no, I just think in points leagues, because McKinnon's a better playmaker and his goal scoring well is worse, his assists, are, his assists totals are much higher than Matthews. Okay, so closing closing um, opinions on this topic. I'm taking Matthews. I think in I'll, – I'll take him in fantasy, but I, I still think that McKinnon to his team is a little bit more valuable right now, especially if you look at the playoffs. His uh, goal scoring has been elite. What's your take, Owen? Yeah, I uh, 100% agree. I'll take Matthews in fantasy, but in a, in a real team where, uh, you know, the goal is to, is to win the Stanley Cup, I'll take Matthews. And I will take, I will take McKinnon in any form of a points league, Matthews in any form of a Bangos league, that includes yearly or dynasty, and for a team I take Matthews. All right, now to the ozone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ozone. So today, I will be covering the elimination games that have happened. So for me right now, three elimination games have happened, and the Avs Golden Knight, that has not happened yet for me. So I'll just tell you who I think is going to win or what I think about, you know, who has won and who has lost. Starting off, Jets Canadians. I said Canadians look like a real contender, and they proved me right, sweeping the Winnipeg Jets. I mean... I, I, I want to say there's a bunch of good reasons. We all we all know what it really boils down to. But they did have a really they had a relentless forecheck. Uh, the Canadians had a relentless forecheck that pressured Jets defensemen into making mistakes. I mean they had little room to breathe. And on the other end of the ice, Habs defensemen Shea Weber, Ben Sherratt, and Joel Edmondson punished Winnipeg forwards. They all played really well. I just wanted to shout them out in the sweep. But everyone knows who really played well. It was Carey Price. With a 94% save percentage, which is incredible, especially when you have the Habs defensemen who are limiting the amount of shots you can get. So when you have an efficient goalie and you're not letting too many shots on net, it is it, that's a, that's a scary team when it when you look at them defensively. Price averaged 1.4 goals per game, so that's 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 under one and a half. That is one goal per game. Incredible performance by Carey Price. 
all in all, a great series by the Canadians, and a, 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 it must have been a tough end to a, any Jets fan season. Over to the Bruins and Islanders. Now, I actually watched this with a Bruins fan, and he was not very happy, but the Bruins did one thing very, very well in this final Game 6 game. They managed to not look like they were they were rattled or already beaten just because it was an elimination game. They came out, had a great first period, you know, tied going into the second, but into that second and that third, the Islanders really just dominated the puck and had uh, more shots on that. Wasn't, wasn't an extreme shots on that. It's just that time of possession. I mean, the Islanders really looked like they were on the power play the whole, almost that entire second and third period. And Tuka Rask with a, uh, under a 90 save percentage, somewhere in the 80s, definitely not helping. He was injured. Honestly, even if he's healthy, I don't see it impacting them that much. Bruins could not hold on to the puck. And I'm actually surprised that the Bruins managed to score two goals in that game because that, that did not look like a game where the Bruins could score. Okay, on to the Canes and the Lightning. So, Lightning won this series in five. I don't think anyone else saw this going differently. It's, I mean, it's the Lightning. But, you know, Hurricanes, no one necessarily did horrible. I mean, Canes goalie, 920 save percentage. That's all right. You know, Howe had 11 points. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a decent playoff series. But the Lightning, I mean, you got Kucherov, who has 18 points right now, which is just incredible. You got Point with eight goals. That's also very good. But ultimately, Vasilevsky, 93% save percentage, really, really good by him. Kind of getting overshadowed by Price, but he's also putting up a very, very strong playoff series. And uh, honestly, not too much to talk about. Pretty, pretty dominant series. Now over to where you could probably talk about this series all day because it has not happened yet. Avs and Golden Knights, Game 6, um, Game 1 of the series started off. Avs looked like they were going to sweep. I mean, they, they they dominated the Golden Knights. And then game two, it looked like the Knights were playing incredibly well. And then Avs eked out a win. And now the Avs are up 2-0. Maybe a, a lesser analyst would have said, you know, series is over. You can't let them go up 2-0. But, you know, I actually said that if you're Vegas, you are perfectly comfortable with this. You're, you're kind of fine with it. I mean, you, you play outplayed them. And boy, have they outplayed them three games straight. Now Avalanche finding themselves down. Uh, here's what I think. I think if Vegas scores first, the series is done. Because the Avs have scored, have striked first pretty, pretty frequently. They've pretty frequently been able to main, or not maintain, but have a lead in this series. But the Avs just have not had a third period. They, they just haven't had one. And especially if you go down early, I don't see the Avs winning this series. I see the Vegas probably winning it now because Vegas just won three in a row. I, I don't see how the Avs could just generate enough momentum to somehow win two in a row after losing three in a row. Because when you're up 2-0, you're, 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 feeling, you're feeling confident. Like, all right, we probably should be able to win this series. And then three wins in a row, not looking good for the Avs. I see the Knights probably going to be winning it today in game six. As an Avs fan, I do hope I'm wrong, but, I mean, the Knights have just been playing really good defense, and uh, Fleury also putting up a pretty good performance. It's tough to put up a great performance against a team like the Avalanche, who can just score goals. I mean, you got McKinnon, who's also putting up a pretty strong performance, uh, but all in all, I do see the uh, the Golden Knights winning that, and uh, it's an, it'll be an unfortunate end to what was to what was a really, really good playoff run by the Colorado Avalanche. But that's just what I think. Who knows what could happen? And that this has been the Ozone. I appreciate you so much for listening. Thank you very much. And so we have met our final segment of this podcast. Um, as teased in our Instagram post, we are now going to be talking about players' fantasy relevance and what they've done in the playoffs uh, up to this point as almost every um, division has been decided, uh, every division winner. And so to touch on the first team, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs. For each team, sorry, we're going to have two down, two up. So for the Leafs, the two down, we have Mitch Marner having four assists and no goals, and Zach Hyman with one goal. Mitch Marner just looked out of place in the playoffs. He just didn't have that 
that bulldog, that tenacious mentality to go get the puck, want the puck, and put the puck in the back of the net. I think that that really hindered Matthews and Hyman, as we have Hyman on the down list here. Matthews could have been here as well. And I think that this was really disappointing for Marner, uh, as not only did we expect big things possibly from him in playoff fantasy, but we also expected bigger things from the Leafs. And I think that this definitely downgrades his value heading into next season. He is guaranteed not worth the first round pick for Zach Hyman. Um, I think it's a bit less of a worry just because he's less of a skilled player. He tends to lean towards more physical, pick up those garbage goals and easy assists playing with Matthews and Marner. I think this still drops his value just a bit. It kind of drops him into those, those true double digit rounds. Um, they kind of outside that top 100 area, I think. And so, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. And the three up, we have our William, or two up, excuse me. We have William Nylander, who put up a terrific, terrific fantasy performance. Five goals, three assists for eight points in seven games. I think he's definitely worth a top five pick. Top, Sorry, top five round pick. And um, he, he's a slam dunk, I think, at this point. He's... He, He's really proved he did extremely well towards the end of the season. I think he'll continue that. And the final player we have is Alex Kerfoot. Yeah, and I definitely think um, an honorable mention for that ups list is um, Jack Campbell. Because how how amazing was he? Hey, he was holding uh, the Leafs in it for a lot of those games. And, um, you know, even in that post-Game 7 interview, he's like, you know, I think I have more, more to give. And I think you can um, – See him maybe have a bounce back, even like breakout season next year, where he does even better than he did this year. Um, I agree, especially because he has a good team in front of him, right? And in, in the yeah. Leafs, who are especially in the regular yeah, season, a lot of an elite team. get you a lot of wins, right? And so any any team that has a lot of wins, you're gonna want their goalie. Exactly. Um, moving on to Edmonton, I think our our two downs here are Drysdale and Yamamoto. McDavid could be there as well. Just kind of um, McDavid and Drysdale kind of disappointing in those first two games, not getting a point. Um, and then that leading to the Jets sweeping them. You know, very, very disappointing uh, performance for both of them. I think you could maybe see McDavid have another great season next year because of his frustration, you know, feeding him to play one of his better seasons. Um, Drysdale. I think he could have another elite season. I don't think he'll ever be back up to that MVP tier again. Nurse and Pugliarvi, definitely with a good uh, series, though. Um, Sorry, Antonio, I'm meaning to cut you off. Um, but despite the the lower statistics for Pugliarvi, the main thing that I wanted to highlight is he was playing with McDavid and, and playing well, and McDavid was trusting him. And so if that line continues for next season, um, he could definitely be a player to watch. Right. Um, and what do you think about Nurse? How do you think he played this playoffs? I, I think he did well, obviously, the last game he had 62 minutes. Um, and I, I think that that he he's the Oilers' number one defenseman. I just – I don't think Clef Bomb's going to be the same coming back. Yeah, definitely because of that injury. It looks like it's going to have some lingering effects on his play. Um, yeah, I agree. But, and yeah, I, I think it was overall just really um, – disappointing um for all Edmonton players just getting swept by a, a team that wasn't even very good in Winnipeg I agree now all moving right. on to the Jets um Connor and Ehlers putting up some good points um with three goals and two assists for uh Connor in that first series and then um Ehlers also putting up a good performance I think it's obviously um not ideal that they got swept by the Habs. Um, but you have to realize that players like Shif Shifley was out basically that whole series after that Evans hit uh, that was so controversial. Um, and, you know, obviously the, the the Jets don't have that great defensive core that you need to be a, a good true contender in the playoffs. Um, so I think they're going to look to build this offseason um, with free agents like Dougie Hamilton out there. Um, as possible big fish targets for them um, for this next season. Uh, just touching on the, the down, I think Dubois and Morrissey, Dubois just looked awful, really. Yeah, I think he was, he was really just invisible. 
Um, I agree. And that was Morrissey. They handed over there towards the end, the number one power play to Pionk, which is really worrying for Morrissey. um, Because that's really where the only part in which he gets his value. And so I think if, even if they're splitting it now, like Pionk and Morrissey are on the same time, I just think that that ruins Morrissey's value and definitely really, really helps Pionk. Uh, Moving on to the Canadians. Wow. I don't think anybody predicted that the Habs would beat the Leafs uh, nevertheless get to the third round uh, with a sweep of the Jets. I agree. I think, yeah, realistically, the only player that, it was. I found it actually really difficult to pick one player, other one other player on the up, other than Price. Like they, I don't really understand how they're doing it. They're not even putting up that many terrific performances, other than Price, who's just been outstanding. And I think Price. I think, yeah, it's it's definitely just. I think it's a team effort. You know, uh, you have players like KK, who Kokut um, who uh, came up big in that um, Toronto series with the series winner, and then you know to Foley with the the um, sw- sweep clenching uh, overtime goal against the Jets. I think they're just doing it by committee, right? Um, kind of worrying from a fantasy point of view, right? Because if, you, if you're looking to pick up somebody like a Toffoli or even Weber. like Suzuki, um, Weber. Weber. Each three, like I think all they're, of those they're really They're splitting the points, so nobody's really going to be that fantasy yeah, that's value. always what it's like for Montreal too. Like it's just it's really hard to take players on that team, really. Yeah, I think it's it could hurt the value of players, but it could also it gives the opportunity for a player like a Suzuki or a Kokutnemi or a Caulfield to, to break through and be become that star player for that team. I um, agree. All, all right. right, moving on to uh the Avalanche. So pretty easy on the up we have mckinnon and ranton and really don't need to say much been they've been outstanding both their first round picks for fantasy yeah. uh, mckinnon's I'm top three i think you, you can't miss on either two either one of these two and should be thrilled if you get them yeah and then on the down we have Kadri and byram um Kadri I'm- going back to his old ways taking he takes the stupid suspension um and just isn't really able to help his team. Doesn't really matter much because the Avs, um, you know, they they're such a great and talented team that I don't think um, losing him was too um, too bad for their offense. But um, for the Blues series, I think that's a good a big reason why they're currently losing this series against Vegas. He's a good defensive center too. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's just same thing that happened to the Leafs. He, he just lost his head. Yeah, I think that's always the problem with Kadri, right? And that's also why he doesn't have too much value in leagues where they take away uh, points for him because he doesn't he doesn't know how to stay out of the box and he also doesn't know how to keep a cool head during um, during the season. I agree. And just quickly touching on Byram, just because he's in play doesn't mean he should affect you. you. I still would take him next year in the yearly leagues, especially in Dynasty. And I, I think he's just going to be really good. He's just young. He's raw. And he just needs some time to develop before they throw him to the wolves in the playoffs, I think. So moving on to Vegas, you know, they're fight, they're going head to head this series. Um, obviously, I think Leonard's on the down because Flurry's just looked so dominant as their starting goalie. Um, I think he's pretty much safe to say he's, his value is just completely dropped off a cliff if he stays with Vegas for next year, um, unless Flurry just becomes some sort of a a um, shadow of himself over over the offseason um theodore also not really showing up to play so far really disappointing for them i think but although petrangelo has kind of taken his number one job over the year um I, I still think it's very disappointing for vegas for theodore to just not to be showing up much on the back end i agree and riley smith has worked his way back into fantasy relevance should be being taken in those teen rounds. He's had terrific, terrific playoffs as, as that whole second line. And I think really all three of them are in their same spot, William Carlson, Riley Smith, Jonathan Marsh. So all three of them should be taken in those mid, mid-teen mid rounds and are very solid players. Right, and I think I think Flurry, um, Flurry has looked dominant over this offseason. I think he's a, he's a pretty solid goalie pick next year because, he, again, Great team in front of him. He's going to get you wins. Um, 
probably going to an even worse division, honestly, next year. Getting a little bit off track here. I think we should uh, move on to the next team. Yeah. Um, in the wild. Kind of surprising that they actually forced Vegas to seven. Um, Talbot standing on his head that whole series. Um, he earns one of our ups as well as Dumba, uh, who looked really good. Our, our two downs for that series were Zuccarello and Ryan Sutter. Um, I think they just kind of couldn't piece it together necessarily, neither of them getting a goal that whole series. Um, but not necessarily saying that they didn't play well. I think it's just that team, nobody expected them to beat Vegas anyway. Um, yeah, I agree. So it, it was just an overall good performance by that team anyway. I agree. Okay, now moving on, um, the Blues. Robert Thomas led their team in points with five points in four games. I think he did really well. He's young, kind of same as Kerfoot, worked his way into that that end of draft flyer pick worthy, and I think he could be really, really good for your team. Ryan O'Reilly continued his good post regular season success, excuse me, in the postseason, and I think that he is probably a top top 10 round pick. And um, I think it's just kind of showing how Krug, um, he was just kind of part of the game plan, in Bo- game plan in Boston last year. This year in, with the Blues, didn't do much at all in the playoffs. I mean, regular. obviously, they, they, got, they got swept and in the regular season. Um, they got swept um, in the playoffs, and I think that he just kind of wasn't the good fit there. Um, they tried to replace Petrangelo with him, and I just don't think it worked out the way they hoped. Uh, moving on to the um, Central Division, Tampa Bay uh, fought off Carolina and ended up taking the Central. They will be facing off against the Isles. And, um, you know, Hedman and Kutrov having a good series for them so far. You want to touch on it? Yeah, so Kucherov obviously has come back from his injury and been terrific. He's been really lights out, improved why he was a top five pick just two years ago and for fantasy. Um, and I think that he's definitely worth a second round pick uh, at this point. Prop, I, I could argue that he's even in the first round, like a late first. Um, I agree, just it. It's just hard because he didn't play in the regular season, and obviously playoffs is more important, but I still wouldn't take him the first round yet. Wait to see what he does. He still has two rounds left. Um, but, yeah, and Hedman, been terrific. Um, he's a great fantasy defenseman, and I think he's probably worth a third-round pick, maybe late second if you really need a D. But, yeah, and. All right, and quickly the two right. down are Sorelli and Sergachev. Sergachev's really done nothing at all points wise. He's hasn't put up a fight on the second power play unit. And Sorelli, um, same thing, hasn't really done anything on the second power play unit. They've really been carried by that kind of top top six. Um, and I think it's a bit worrying for his fantasy value next season. All right. So next we have the Florida Panthers. So um, this one's a bit easy on the up. We have Jonathan Huberto, just ridiculous stats. And talking about going back to our title, is he worthy of a first-round pick? I think there's definitely an argument, guaranteed second-round pick. If, right. you, if you find that you need a left winger, that, that's not a horrible pick to take him. Um, he's 27 or 28. Um, and that wouldn't be a horrible pick to take him. I wouldn't mind taking him. I got him this, got him in the second round of our main dynasty league. Um, but yeah, if you get him in the first round, I think that's not a horrible pick. I wouldn't be taking him top early, early, excuse me. But, um, uh, if you're picking nine, 10, 11, 12, and you want to take him, that's fine. Spencer yeah, Knight, especially if he's going to be like one of their main scores, right? I agree. Spencer Knight as well is on the up. He did really well in the last two games. Obviously, he only went one and one, but it's really tough to stop Tampa Bay. But I still thought he did really well. Dynasty, huge, huge 
um, explosion potential there for your dynasty goaltending team. And I think that he's, he's definitely worth a pick in yearly drafts just because depending on what happens with Drieger, if Drieger re-signs with Florida, which I don't think that he will, but if he does, that really hurts his value for yearly leagues. Um, but Dynasty is still a great pick. And the two down, we have Bobrovsky just because he lost his job and he, he's just been awful. And he's getting to the point where I wouldn't even take him. And Duclair as well. He had some potential a terrific season in Ottawa last year. Um, didn't do that well in Florida. Just really struggled in the playoffs in the first round against Tampa Bay. And I think he's starting to move towards fantasy irrelevance. And the final team, we have the Florida, or excuse me, the Carolina Hurricanes. So on the up, we have Aho and Nadelkovic. Nadelkovic, don't really know why they took him out. He wasn't their problem. He gave up two goals, four goals in two games against Tampa Bay. They lost both games. That's not his fault. He's really young, terrific goalie, and I think he's definitely going to be a big part of their team. Same with Aho. He had a great playoffs, and he's a great player to have for fantasy. Good second, third-round pick. On the down, we have Nino Niederreiter um, and Vincent Trocek. So we have Niederreiter just because both these guys ended up injured at the end of the Tampa Bay series. Trocek seemed pretty serious, which is why we have him on the down. Could potentially affect him next season. Um, not sure if he's going to, there's any risk of him missing time yet, but just in terms of affecting his. Um, ability to go 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 get it next year and need a rider same thing he really struggled even before he got hurt um he was a good wave wire ad last year but i don't really know where to take him this year um i think he is definitely on the lower end of the spectrum would you not agree i i, I think you would agree you've watched what he does in the first couple of weeks and then um if he seems to be picking up the pace a little bit i you know then cut him off the waiver wire give him a chance yeah um, final, uh, final team of the central division, um, is Nashville. I think it was actually surprising that they pushed Carolina to so many games. Um, Ellis and Granlund being the highlights of that series for Nashville, uh, Tobin and Ardvison on the down. Um, overall good series for, for Nashville. I feel like they, they were another team that kind of did it by committee. Um, not anybody that necessarily stood out a ton. Um, but just I thought Soros overall... played pretty well. Uh, he's yeah, young. Yeah. He, he played pretty well. Right, but I don't think it's going to shift too much fantasy relevance. Um, just quickly touching on one thing. I agree with what you're saying, but the Tolvanen, he didn't – he had maybe one point. I don't think he even had any. That's a bit worrying for yearly leagues – dynasty as well if you if you're a new if you are continuing a dynasty league it's a bit worrying you might want to look to possibly flip him off of his regular season performance not saying it's a must but just it possibly something to look for all right, right and we'll move on to the last division the east division right and you know me i'm a bruins fan um loved what i saw out of all three of pasternak marshawn and mcavoy really carried the team um, you know, Pasternak getting five goals in this last series against the Islanders. Um, team kind of just couldn't put it together. My two downs were um, Krejci and Grizzlick, especially because of Grizzlick's performance in game six. You know, he kind of really, I think he cost them the game, choked up the puck twice, leading directly to goals, um, and just kind of wasn't sound. The rest of the series, even whether it be like on the power play when he um, on the power play when he just couldn't keep the puck in on the side, um, or just generally on defense, Krejci also didn't do much on offense. He had that one uh, power play goal um, in one of their games in the series, but I don't think um, you know I was expecting probably more of a I wasn't expecting his uh, great playoff season like he had last year leading the team in points but I I was expecting he was going to put together his game a little bit more obviously he's getting up there in age um but yeah I was looking up for a little bit more from him um I think Pasternak and Marshawn are, are both easy second round picks Pasternak in dynasty leagues could even be a first round pick depending um McAvoy I think will look to have a breakout season next year 
you know, he was up there with, uh, he's tied with Hedman right now with most points for a defenseman in the playoffs. And I think he, he could build off that leading into the regular season next year and be one of those top five defensemen in points. Um, so I picked him in my draft. Uh, I think it was in the fifth or sixth round. Um, and I'm looking for him to break out next year. On to the Islanders. This is a team that, you know, famously does it by committee with the Bar- Barry Trot system. Uh, Bovillier and Pajot doing well for them, uh, as well as Brock Nelson in their series against the Bruins. Um, you know, in every series they have one or two players that stands out, but it's never one player that does it for the whole playoffs. Um, I was a little confused when they ba- went back to Varlamov from Sorokin um, after that Penguin series when Sorokin seemed to be the answer. Um, but nevertheless, it seemed to work out for them. Uh, Varlamov just having the Bruins number for that whole uh, series. Obviously, they are in the third round now against um, Tampa Bay. Uh, that will be coming up later this week. And uh, second last team in this division, the Quickly Capitals. Go back. For fantasy perspective, um, JGP might want to draft for Bengals League. He's good at getting you those peripheral points, but the same thing happened with Beauvillier and Nelson last year. They had terrific playoffs. You'd think, oh, these guys are going to be great late round value. They could really break out, and neither of them really worked in the regular season. And so yeah, I'm not saying shy it, away from it, it, but it's just a thing to watch for. I think it's generally just because of the Barry Trot system. That's like bring, what brings down players like Beauvillier's value, you know, um, him and Barzell. They're, they look like more offensive players, but, you know, since they are playing to the system, they don't get those points as much. Um, still solid teams round picks, both of them. Uh, for Washington, Oshie and Wilson had a pretty good series. Um, Vanacek and Samson are both not doing very well against the Bruins. You know, they held them to overtime a couple t- uh, three times, I think it was. Um, can't really blame them for the series. The Capitals just couldn't really put it together against the Bruins after that first game. Um, but yeah, our two down are Vanacek and Samsonov, just because they were kind of, you know, um, Samsonov was injured for the majority of the series. You know, Craig Anderson having to come in and play for them. Um, that was because Vanacek, yeah, well, because of Vanacek after, after, in game one and game two. Um, but still, not looking good for their goalies. I think they will have a good season next year. It's just um, this playoffs, they they were injured and, they, you know, they were playing a good competitive team in the Bruins. Um, in terms of the offense next year, you know, I think a lot depends on whether Ovechkin resigns. It looks like he will, you know, he's the captain for the team. Um, but, you know, if he, if he, if he ended up di- not resigning, which would be a shocker, players like Wilson and Oshie, and, you know, Kuznetsov would be get, gaining some value because... Um, I would say almost goal Backstrom loses value because Backstrom benefits so much off of Ovi's goal scoring. So I think Backstrom right, right, right. could lose value, but that that's those, those second-tier scores for him really get a big boost if he leaves. But I agree, Doughty's leaving. Um, and then finally, our final team, the Pittsburgh Penguins. They shocked, I think the league a little bit by losing to the Islanders. I mean, it's it's always shocking when the Islanders win a series. Um, yeah, they seem to do it all the time. they don't have offense. But yeah, but they do it all the time. Um, Carter and Carter looking like a very good pickup for them. Uh, had a couple of goals in that series. Uh, he does still clutch. have at least one year left. It's a brutal contract. But just for fantasy, he could. he's another late round guy to possibly target. Just because Latang also play. have it. Yeah, Latang also had a good series. I think the main takeaway from the series was that Jari should not be a starting goalie. You know, uh, he's not as good as people think he is. And if you look, he looked like he was playing high school hockey, honestly, in that last game. Just ridiculous how I, I don't want to disrespect the guy, obviously, but he was not putting his cards together and he couldn't. He looked like he couldn't stand out there. Um, our other down is McCann. You know, he looked pretty pretty solid in the regular season, but um, in this postseason, in this uh, sorry, in the um, in these playoffs, 
not doing exactly what they wanted uh, him to do, but I still think he's going to have a solid season next year in fantasy. Okay. Um, that has been a very long podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, and be sure to meet us back here again next week, same time, same place, when we talk about different drafting styles for the first and second round of your fantasy draft. The next time we drop the puck. Hi, this is Antonio on behalf of the Fantasy Hockey Bucks team. Uh, for more information, please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Instagram at the Fantasy Hockey Pucks.